Another day, another battle. And as you can tell, there's a vulture flying over the battlefield, ready to feast. Now, originally, this vulture showed up for my channel, but he's going to have to wait a little bit longer because today we're playing Total War Rome 2. This is a 4v4 siege battle, and it's got fantastic teamwork, and we're going to see an epic cab sally out but not just any epic cab sally out it's actually really well organized and well we'll get into it later once we dive into the battle before we do i do want to mention one of my favorite sponsors displate so displate makes beautiful metal posters uh, this company is a genuine like really nice very caring company it's a it's a fantastic sponsorship and they make really really cool posters so if you guys are interested in getting a displate poster use the link down in the video description that will give you a discount and of course it supports my channel so i do appreciate that also this video replay is from joe on it uh, which he has his own YouTube channel. So that's linked down below as well. So thank you, Joe. So let's dive in now. All right, we'll start with the defenders because they got a very unique army. We've got Parthia. A little hint for you guys when you play uh, Rome 2. Whenever you're facing Parthia as an attacker, expect to see some Cav charge out of the settlement. Expect to see lots of Cav. So, you know, bring some anti-Cav units or Cav units of your own. Uh, next over here, we have Masasili. So Mesesili, Desert Rome, as I like to call them, they're joining them on the battlefield. Over here, we have the Arverni. So Arverni with their awesome barbarian soldiers. And then we have another barbarian faction, which is Swaby. So pretty cool force. I like the combination of factions. Let's go ahead and look at this overpowered attacking force. So on one side, by the way, we got some artillery firing here. On one side, we have the Seleucids, or if you want to sound really smug, the Seleucids. No, I'm just kidding. You don't sound smug. I'm only joking. And then over here, we have the Romans. They are the faction the game is named after. They're very strong. And then finally, we have, or not finally, but next, we have the... Uh, we have Epirus, so another Greek faction. And then, once again, we have another army of the Seleucids. So, let's dive into this one over on this side and see what the heck's going to happen. All right, so this is where he goes full-out charge. Now, most of his force here, not most, but the, the force sitting in reserve, he's got four horse archers. This force looks like it's just shock cav. He's got eastern cataphracts, a real headache to deal with. So, whenever this happens, guys, what I like to do personally, it might not be the best thing to do, but I drop everything. I don't keep pushing siege equipment. I drop everything and I try to build, make defensive positions to, you know, to stop this cab. But the cataphracts, they're going to go ahead and chase down the tortoises because tortoises can put in some big holes in your walls and a delicious charge right into the, the thorax swordsman. And that's another good unit to go after because they are very strong. I like to call the Thorax Swordsmen the feudal knights of Rome, too. They're very versatile. Uh, they are very strong and kind of in the middle in terms of price. All right, now we've got more Eastern Cataphracts going around. And he's just, he's just riding around. And he will gladly accept a battle against the general. If he can kill the Seleucid general early on, that is going to be a huge win for the defenders. Sure enough, he's going to pile in troops. Now, the Seleucids have also thrown in some of their own cab, but it's mere citizen cab. Now, they might do okay against these cataphracts, but it's going to be a very challenging fight. So, let's see if uh, Parthia can defeat this general. Now, we have the Parthian general who's looking for more fresh blood. He's going for the siege tower. He's going to try to slow down the siege towers. Look at this. Boom. Great charge, and that's going to cause the men to uh, run off the siege tower. And little fun fact, if you didn't know, when you hit a unit with cav, or really any unit uh, that is pushing a siege tower, it will make them come off the siege tower. You see how they're walking down? So what I like to do is, I don't really care about killing them. I just like to pinball around and hit each unit. It looks like he's trying to do that now. Now hold on. I forgot to mention this. I completely forgot to mention this. Look at this over here. Let me pause it. I'm so sorry. I was I was supposed to show you this, but Masasili. 
He's also sallying out Cav. Now, what's really cool about these Cav units is that they were right in the open. They were actually right here. So those Cav units from Masesley have Vanguard ability, so they can spawn outside the city walls. So they were right here at the start of the game, and they just charged up this hill, went through the trees. Guys, it, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch. But this is pro-tier teamwork right here. You have Parthia running right out the gate, distracting the Seleucids while his teammate flanks around and uses his cav to go after vulnerable units. This is a cheap cav unit too. They're, they're not too hard to kill, but it, the damage is done. They've wiped out most of these archers, and I cannot stress how important archers are to a siege battle. So really good teamwork by Masesali. Really good teamwork. And he also has more cav kind of running around. Finally, Epirus is like, oh, yo, stop harassing my, my allies. So he's going to show up with some Hellenic uh, royal cav. He's got more cav down there. So, yeah, that's, you know, whenever, guys, that's the other tip I want to tell you. Whenever you're attacking and you take on, like, a crazy cav sally out from the front gate, watch your flanks because it could be a diversion. But the Parthians are doing so much damage. So much damage. Look at them. They're just roaming around. Now they're going to go ahead and destroy or try to damage the, uh, the Cav of Epirus. And then we have the Parthian general still going strong with the royal cataphracts. Getting in some beautiful charges. Is this another general? Another general they're going for. Now, I'm going to do some slow motion really quick. Did they kill the general of... The Seleucids, it looks like they did. I don't see them. So I think they wiped out the Seleucid general, and now the uh, general of Epirus is the next one in line. While that's going on, we have the allies of the Seleucids still pushing. They've got the Romans already taking the walls. And no surprise here that the defenders are being more passive in their defense because they're focusing so much on microing outside the walls. And here comes Rome. They're already jumping down into the streets. And, or not jumping, but oh, look at that. Urgh! Where'd it go? Disappeared. <laughs> but they're going to charge in and try to do some damage to these desert legionaries. Uh, back over here, we have Epirus trying to bring down some walls with the tortoises. And then we have the other Seleucid army, which is also making their way with a ton of hillmen. So this is obviously going to be the initial attack. Weak troops to try to absorb a bunch of ammo. So, there you have it. Let's go uh, back to normal speed and see what Parthia is doing here. He hasn't... Look at this, too. He hasn't moved out his other cav force. That's another tactic uh, that you could use on opponents. If you sally out, maybe keep a couple cav units in reserve for a sally out later on. Because what happens with players is that usually there'll be one initial sally out and it's over. So what might happen is that if you sally out and the you know your opponents defeat it, they will have their guard down because okay the sally out's over, it's done, my guard's down, I can focus on attacking the walls, but all of a sudden, boom, another cav force sallies out and could potentially catch them with their pants down. So one thing to consider, but we got some ferocious cav fighting right outside these city walls. And nobody expected this. I mean, it didn't seem like this Seleucid player expected this. Lots of Javis, Pila, flying around, being tossed around. But this is going to be a little bit more difficult for the uh, Parthian uh, soldiers as they are starting to dwindle, dwindle, dwindle down. But as soon as they kind of defeated this cav for there's still a big chunk of cav over here that's still a problem. Got some Roman auxiliary troops trying to chase them down. Good on them. But they're not going to catch up to them. Uh, but yeah, as soon as they kind of defeated that first initial force, here comes another one. Here comes another one. Kind of riding around. These are horse archers. They're going to be a big headache. Headache. Also, uh, the artillery here is firing into the big blobs. And the reason the horse archers are going to be such a big headache is because the Seleucids lost their archers. A good counter to horse archers are your own archers, and they kind of lost that. So this is going to be very difficult 
for the Seleucids. Very tough for them. So, they just need to try to... I think what's best for the Seleucids now, play defensive, don't get aggressive, try to kill this cab force if you can, or really just absorb the, the ammo in some way. I know you're going to take losses, but just wait until your teammates, your allies break through other parts of the wall which hopefully will give you an opportunity to sneak into the city as well so the romans are still fighting for this corner they've got a lot of troops here this is going to be a tough fight of course roman infantry is very dangerous we also have some troops up here throwing down look how cool this is throwing down their pila and trying to kill the units in reserve of Masesali. over on the other side we've got epirus breaking down the walls but we have Celtic warriors ready to plug those gaps. Nothing too crazy here. We've just got mercenary Etruscan hoplites. I don't know why you brought them. I'm going to be honest. I, I mean, I get bringing hoplites, but why have hoplites be the initial force in a breach? I get it when it's on def excuse me, when it's on defense, but on attack, the hoplites I usually don't send in first because I need some like damage dealers. I need to slice through the defense. Over here, we've got more hoplites trying to take on the Celtic warriors. And up on the walls, there's also some intense fighting where we have a unit of Celtic warriors taking on some Samnite warriors. Yep, the mercenary Samnite warriors. skirmishing going on from afar over on the other side the second Seleucid army is making their way Epirus is actually shifting over a lot of troops you see this shifting over a lot of troops to support the Seleucids and it looks like oh looks like Parthia is coming to harass the Romans look at the, the Parthian general is going in right now trying to take out another set of archers and they are. They're breaking. Oh, God. The Parthian Cav. The Masesali uh, also did a really good job of killing the uh, Seleucid Cav. So, it's again, just great teamwork. And seeing so many archer units die like this, it's going to be tough for the attackers to take this battle. It's not impossible. They've got Rome. You know, they've got the Romans, the, the bloody Roman war machine. But it's still going to be very challenging to take on all of the defending archers without having archers. So very cool. That, that corner uh, battle is still going on. It looks like... Most of the Arverni forces held off the attack here from the um, from Epirus. Uh, and Epirus has decided to kind of join forces, which is not a bad idea. There, he's mostly attacking walls near this area uh, so he can help his Seleucids, which are currently pushing through a huge gap right now. We got some Club Levy, hell yeah, ready to hold against the Hillman. So in case you didn't know, Club Levy have become quite the meme on my channel. I have won many battles going all club levy uh, on the battlefield. Or really on defense. It really only works on defense bringing club levy because uh, they have a lot of like projectiles and there's so many of them that it's hard to kill them all if you get a whole army full of them. All right, so back over here, we've got these uh, Swaby trying to hold a spear wall against some hillmen. I don't think this is... I mean, again... Ooh, rest in peace. <laughs> oh! And here comes... Let's see, are they going to throw back? Come on, I know that... I'm pretty sure the spears have... You got projectiles, right? Oh, I don't think so. And there comes a charge from the hillmen. We got some low-tier units fighting it out. Always cool to see. Lots of projectiles coming in from the reserve units in the back there. So, a full-on fight for these walls. And this is probably the attacker's best location. This is like their best bet. We got defenders breaking over here. We have a ton of uh, 
What are these Sam Knight Etrus Etruscan and Sam Knight, I think. Yeah, Sam Knight Warriors that are causing some damage. And let's not forget the archers who are dropping some arrows on the enemy's heads. Nice struggle going on there. Very cool. The walls look like, I mean, it looks like, I'm pretty sure Arverni should be able to hold on to the walls here, but that's okay. I, I don't think Epirus cares too much. I think this is more of just like a little diversion. So the rest of the forces can focus on attacking this corner area. Uh, back here, I mean, see, Rome is kind of, Rome has been, well, they held them back. In fact, they're even pushing up on the walls. Desert Legionary against Normal Legionary, Veteran Legionary. Uh, Rome should edge out in first here. And, or, you know, they should survive this, this engagement. Oof. But the Desert Legionary are definitely giving them a run for their money. Is Rome going to rush in more units? We'll find out. Let's, uh, let's see how this is progressing over here with the uh, Parthian Cav against the Seleucids. Parthia, they've got some medium Cav. They definitely, this is like their lighter Cav. Not nearly as uh, can pack a punch. But they do have the Horse Archers, which are going to be really annoying. And they're going to ride around and try to uh, probably focus down the enemy Archers. Which, yep, that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to try to focus down the enemy archers. And this is not a bad idea from Parthia. I know this might look like a noob noob formation. But this is an actual, you know, it makes sense in the right situation. And this is definitely a right situation where he's got to form some sort of protective ring around his archers. There's just too many cav units to be able to, like, push up archers. You're going to get flanked and run over. So, yeah, he's trying. But... Poor, poor Seleucids over here, just trying to stay afloat. And it's good. He's keeping the Parthians busy so he can't focus on the main battle. But it's not like there's any Parthian... Well, there's... Is that... No, there's no Parthian infantry. So it's not like he needs to focus on the inner defenses. He's all Cav, baby. So yeah, Rome still... Still trying to take control of this wall. Let's go over to the juicier part of the battle, which I would say is over here. And we got a charge by the Blood Sworn. And this is not a great formation for the Seleucids. You've got some Thorax Swordsmen that are going to have some trouble here. And oh, the Naked Warriors. Charging in with their danglers out. So they're going in. They're like, nah, I'm not ill. Come on, man. Like, I know we're, we're, we're sworn enemies and everything, but put some pants on. Put some pants on, which they do. Of course, like they're not gonna, they're not gonna put actual like you know, full, full naked bodies in Rome too. You know what I mean? Keeping it PG, PG 13, I guess. But they are taking on the naked warriors, Thorax swordsmen, over here. Epirus is trying to slice through the blood sworn to kind of put a flanking force. Royal pelt is very good. Should be able to handle. Uh, these guys, the uh, the blood sworn, the blood sworn warriors. Nice little struggle going on there. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's see what's happening over here. Ooh, the the archer support here in this corner is definitely helping out the attackers. The Celtic warriors. They're getting chewed up. And Celtic Warriors, I mean, they don't have the best armor. So those arrows are going to chew them up. I mean, it's not terrible armor. What is it, 45? Let's compare that to the Sam Knight Warriors, which is 95. So, yeah, you can see how arrows can be a lot more deadlier to the Celtic Warriors. And this is, you know, and that's the other thing to consider. Like, you do risk friendly fire, but look at the pros. The pros being that these guys will die much faster to arrows than your guys. So, you know, it's a better situation. Anyways, wow, okay. <laughs> Sam Knight Warriors showing their dominance, destroying the Celtic Warriors, even the support of the Arrow Tower, just absolutely taking control of this wall, which is good to see for the attackers. Now back over here, uh-oh. Uh-oh, things are getting interesting. 
the Parthian Cav has decided to abandon this attack against the Seleucids, which the Seleucids are going to go ahead and trickle in their troops and help out the Romans. Which, by the way, guys, the Romans are making some progress. Now, keep in mind, the balance of power is still greatly in favor of the attackers. I know this has been a rough start for the attackers, but they can easily, easily win this one if the defenders make too many mistakes. Look at this Roman. Look at this Roman. He's like, look at that face. He's like, he's like mumbling something like, gosh, damn it. I had to travel all this far to fight a bunch of barbarian scum. You know, <laughs> I was at home enjoying some some wine. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> whatever a Roman would would really be upset about. Anyways, <laughs> so they're charging against the Desert Legionaries. Nice clash in the streets. Also intense fighting up here on the walls. We have the Seleucids helping out his Roman ally. And then back over here, let's see what happens here. Are the are the defenders gonna keep holding? I mean, I think they got they're gonna get to a point where they might not have enough men. And oh oh oh, let's not miss this. Elephants charging in. Oh, that's not a smart idea. Elephants charging in. We got a general taking on some noble blood calf, and he's getting flanked. This would be disaster for the attackers to lose their general like this. And here goes the elephants. Wow. Wow. I think the general's okay, though. It was a bold move by Parthia to try to kill the general of the Seleucids, which they kind of need to do at this point to try to win this battle because they're a bit overwhelmed. And if they can kill, you know, if they can cut the head off the serpent, so to speak, then uh, they could try to turn this around based on morale, you know, breaking enemy armies instead of killing them. Uh, but it looks like the Seleucid general is doing more than okay, and he's chasing down the Parthian uh, calf. Now, we got to be careful with the elephants, though, because they're getting harassed by the horse archers who are using fire arrows. Might cause these elephants to go berserk, but it's not a big deal because there's not a, friend not a lot of friendlies in the area. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. So let's go back over to the other side and see how the, Seleuc the Seleucids are doing in the inner streets. Looks like it's going quite well. We do have some Thorak pikemen, which unfortunately are going to get focused down by arrow fire, but it's not too bad. So what is this? What is some weird... Did they form like a square formation here? Oh yeah, they did with their spears. I would move up the pikemen. Like, move them up. Well, I guess they kind of are engaged here, huh? Okay. So, they're doing their job. But they... See, the closer you get to the enemies, the less likely arrows are to do, like, the less damage. Because it will inflict a lot of friendly fire, too. Because of how close you are to the enemy. But, yeah. Ooh, they're taking some losses here. 118. They're still very healthy of a unit. But those arrows are causing some issues. But they are breaking the, the defending forces. So good on the Seleucids. Epirus over here has taken control of this corner. Um, they're starting to run out of defending forces, guys. I mean, they are running out of troops. And look at this. Uh, you know, can we get a shout out for this, this Seleucid player? I don't know your name. We'll see it at the end of the battle. But hey, dude, I love the fight in you, man. That was great. I've seen players easily give up after a sally out like that. Like, oh, great. You know, what am I supposed to do against this? Dude, he didn't give up. He didn't give up. He he took what he could. He he did what he could. And now he's still in the game. He still has tons of healthy units. An archer unit. He can still run through and do tons of damage and support his team. That's what I'm talking about. That's some good old never giving up attitude. I love it. So, Rome over here is taking control of the corner. They're slowly pushing the streets. Now, this is a very nice street, or this is a nice city for the defenders because it has very thin streets that you can hold pretty effectively. But at what point do you give up the outer streets and fall back to the inner streets? You got to be pretty close to that. Swaby trying to hold. Swaby and Misesely trying to hold against the Seleucids who thought they were defeated. I bet many of you guys thought the Seleucids were screwed. No, they fight on. They fight on. All right, so Thorax Sword, uh, I'm sorry, Thorax Pikeman 
still slicing through the, the chosen swordsman. Uh, did they kill the other pike unit or did he fall back? Let's try to. I think he fell back. No, pikemen. Wait a second. Oh, no, no, they're still there. No, those are spears. Maybe they did kill him. I don't know. I'm not sure, but we do have some cav charging in the back here. Going after archers. Let's see, what is this? The medium cav trying to run through, but this is a bit of a suicide mission for Parthia. So at this, at this point, I think Parthia is just doing what he can. He's got some horse archers, very depleted, 31 and 34. So they are very weak. Originally, they had 80 men. So Parthia is mostly out of the game, but they did do a ton of damage for sure. For sure. But I see this and I just look at like... It, it's going to be tough for the defenders. It's going to be really tough. And that's the risk of Cav Sally Outs. I do recommend if you are a skilled player and you know how Sally Outs work, go for it. I mean, it's still risky, but the reward is high. If you're a newer player, I do not recommend Sally Outs because the risk is so high that you could easily lose your very expensive Cav and just be out of luck from there because a big expensive portion of your army is dead and they did not get enough kills so it's something that you need to watch carefully if you do sally out and also don't be afraid to give up uh in terms of the sally out as in like if it's not going well you don't see an opportunity don't force anything you know just just don't force anything fall back the cav use them later on in the battle don't force engagements. Go for engagements if you know they're there. The opportunity is there. So Rome is putting up a ferocious fight with their Seleucid allies against Masesli, mostly taking on these skirmishers and a, a unit of desert legionaries. Over this side, definitely looks good. It looks okay. Got Seleucids mixed in with the Romans again. That's a deadly force. Big headache to deal with. Actually falling back, it looks like. Reforming, possibly. Gonna use some Javis. So there's about 12 minutes left in this battle. And I still really can't decide or I can't really say who's gonna win this one. I mean, the attackers still have a deadly force. And look at this. The elephants are now being called in and taking on these uh, chosen swordsmen. Oh, yes. Yeah, scary Seleucids. Very scary Seleucids. Look at this. Elephants going in. No fear. Oh. They got... Oh, hey. That's okay. See, that was a good move there by the Seleucid Elephant player because he charged them in deep in enemy lines knowing that if they went berserk, they will be mostly in enemy territory. See, see, they're berserk and they're going towards the... He's like, run! And he's not going towards his own forces. That's always good. If you ever think that your elephants are going to go berserk, maybe just charging them deeper into the enemy lines is the best bet because they'll go berserk in their lines and not your lines. Lots of archer fire coming down, really hurting these pikemen. Look at this, look at this man. Oh my God, the elephants are just, you know, sometimes elephants go berserk and they kill a bunch of your own guys. But sometimes when the moons align, the elephants go berserk and slaughter the enemy. This is, this is perfect. This is exactly what he wants out of his elephants. And they actually stopped going berserk. And now the general is going to charge in because he's got an archer opportunity. This is huge. This is how you're supposed to use your cav on attack. Just like this. Very good job. But make sure you have an exit strategy, especially if it's your general. Which he doesn't. <laughs> This might be a suicide mission, unless these elephants can help him out. Elephants, please help your general out. Oh, yeah, I think the Seleucid general is in danger. Okay, so that's one thing to consider, guys. You might have an opportunity to charge down some archers, but be careful. Don't fall into a trap. Especially if it's your general. 
But it's okay. He killed some archers. At least he got that. Elephants are going berserk again. Hopefully they stop and go after uh, their enemy's forces. Um, Epirus is pushing. The defenders are low on fuel. <laughs> when I say fuel, I mean troops. They are low. The attackers, I mean... The attackers had such a stacked team. Two Seleucids, one Rome, one Epirus. That's a nasty army force. You know, that's a nasty force of, of uh, allies, coalition. Here comes more troops coming in. Throw spears. They need to break through. Now is the time. Break through. Love the sun effect in Rome too. Very pretty. So they're still slashing and hacking away. Nothing is in reserve, guys. So the victory point, I believe, is right here. We look pretty sure this is the victory point. They do have some chosen swordsmen. But I would start to fall back and prepare your last stand. Now we've got Swaby throwing in their general. We got some sword masters, masters of the blade. They've trained their whole life. They are one with the blade. And they're kicking butt. Here comes uh, some hex bearers who have done enough screeching and are ready to charge in and support the sword masters. Nice. Now that's a woman. All right, nice job uh, killing the uh, Celtic warriors. Epirus is now charging in some uh, Cretan archers to support. And yes, we have a, our full-on retreat. We got a flanking force of Romans. Oh, that aren't gonna go for it. Weird. I Even though that cab is right there, I would've charged in that infantry from the rear. It probably will break them instantly. But instead, he's gonna dedicate, I mean, I get it. He's gonna dedicate these spears to hold off against the, uh, the riders over there. Okay. I, again. I still think you should charge into him. You'll break him. Oh, the Cavs. Cavs like, come on, man. Auxiliary spears. Who? Put their spears out. Man, what is your profession? Pottery. Poetry. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty based. Thank you. I don't know why he sounds like Kermit the Frog. I do pottery on my spare time. And I train with the auxiliary. That's very cool. I don't know why I'm going on with this joke, but I don't know. It's just very wholesome. It's like someone who's just like not like purely a professional soldier and he's got all their passions. I like reading, reading the classics. I don't know. Here comes that charge. Finally. And Swaby coming around the flank with some berserkers. Hey, Berserkers are a game changer, and that auxiliary force is getting annihilated. Again, should have just charged the rear of this unit, which is still fighting strong. They could have easily have broken these Desert Legionaries, but instead find themselves surrounded and destroyed. My goodness. Wow, they, hey. Okay, I, did, I just... Wait. They just annihilated the, the attackers over here? What happened to Epirus? Oh, you know what? I think I mixed up the... Okay, well, they destroyed... <laughs> they destroyed the attackers over here, and now they're going to be able to shift all of their forces over to this side. My goodness. The balance of power is actually kind of shifted in favor of the uh, defenders. If I didn't spend, like, the last five minutes doing a Kermit the Frog soldier joke, I probably would have saw... <laughs> Probably would have seen more clearly what happened over on the other side of the siege battle. But the defenders are rallying. That's exactly what they needed. They are victorious on one side of the battle. And now we have streams of reinforcements charging into this fight. Look at them. These berserkers are mad. 
bad. Over here, they are victorious, but they're not pushing. They're not making any moves. They're just sitting here in reserve. Which is good, you know? Just sit there, do nothing. More reinforcements coming in. We got hex bearers, we've got uh, uh, Gaelic hunters, we've got sword masters. This flank is starting to get a little overwhelming. The hex bearers are screaming, look at that. They're using their hexes. They're like, E, ooh, E, you suck. I don't know. What would they be screaming? Like curses or something? I, I'm not even gonna. All right, so yeah, the Berserker is still going toe to toe with these armored legionaries. I'm surprised they're not sending in more forces to help. But here we go. Finally, finally, these troops are pushing, making a move. Throw spears going in. Let's see if they can help out the fight. They're got a general in the mix there. Help out these Romans who are getting attacked by wolf warriors and the Masasalis general. So, very cool. Yeah, show them no fear. See, there's still a deadly force here over here. If the attackers can do some good flanking and maneuvers they can still win this one but because of this map oh i didn't see this force over here Oof. yeah because of the map it's just there's not a lot but a lot of open ground and there's not a lot of opportunities to get the flanking but this is still anyone's game there we go we're seeing some breaking the wolf warriors are dead the armored legionaries are pushing and if they could break through this line of Celtic warriors, they would be able to flank around and support the push over here, which seems to have lost all momentum. The Berserkers are single-handedly. 19 Berserkers holding back 96 men. We've got a unit of reserve, which is good because right above them, yeah, we got some light infantry that are about to flank. Also, let's not forget, Parthia still has horse archers. Oof. Let's see if this resilient Roman infantry can claw their way out of this hole that they have found themselves in. Very nice. Okay, they're trying to overwhelm the Riders of the Hunt, and the Riders are gonna regroup with the um, Averni, which are actually gonna charge in these Chosen Swordsmen, hand-picked warriors that are a little scared, so they're falling back. Now they're reforming. They're like, all right, reform, reform. We got time, we got time. Now back over here, look at this. My goodness, this is actually a decent push. A decent push. By the attackers. But unfortunately, over here for Rome, they are breaking. It's down to the Seleucids with their Thorax swordsmen to get some some work done. And then we also have the uh, Thero Spears kind of holding the flank. The attackers are getting stretched out too thin. They can still win this, though. I, I believe. Oh, that, oh that's going to be... That's gonna suck. Hex bears, women screeching at you from the rear. And that causes, oh yeah, look at all those negative morale loss. That sucks. And guys, I think that's gonna be it. I think that's it. Morale has been shattered. It's down to the Romans, which are now breaking as well. And this is going to be a successful defense for the defenders. So, um, yeah, overall the battle was great good i mean it was non-stop action cab sallying out doing so much damage i mean the biggest loss for the attackers were losing their generals so early on i believe epirus and um the seleucids lost their general 
right away. And because of that, their army just didn't have the stomach to fight. The defenders were able to, uh, you know, chip away at their numbers. And the morale loss was too much. And that is a victory for the defenders. All right, let's end the replay. Look at the results. Joe on it playing as Arverni. Uh, we have Dan, Olfer, and Charlie Six Zulu. These guys are all friends. So um, I don't know if the, these guys, I, I don't know if they were like a team taken on randoms. But um, it was pretty close nonetheless. But it was a really good fight. We've got the Seleucids over here with getting the most. Actually, no, Rome getting the most kills. Just under 2,000 on his team. But over on the other side, Ulfer. Look at that. Ulfer, 2,400 with Swaby. That's awesome. Club Levy. Got to bring that Club Levy. Archer's doing decent there. God, how do you get so many kills? I just, it's like I don't see it in his units. That's crazy. 282. That's awesome. So, yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up here for me. Thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you, Joe, for the replay. So, check out his channel. And once again, a big shout out to Displate, which uh, they make awesome metal posters, which is linked down in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this battle, don't forget to leave a like, comment, share, and all that jazz. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you next time on the battlefield.